Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to yet another great episode of Bahrain Now, your source of local initiatives, happenings, talents, and trends. I'm your host, Bara Abdullah, here to walk you through our exciting lineup of segments and personalities from around Bahrain. So don't go away. We'll be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, our next guest found her passion for the culinary world at a very early age as she trained around the world at prestigious places and even worked under the leadership of Chef Wolfgang Puck. Ladies and gentlemen, Lulwa Suela, how are you? Hi, Bara. Thank you for having me here. Oh, most definite. I'm super excited. I mean, you have such an amazing journey. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Came with a lot of hard work, but it was worth it. And you're so humble about it. That's <laughs> what we love about that. Tell us how you found yourself, you know, in the culinary world. Was it at the kitchen? Was it with the plastic fork? How did that happen? Uh, I was always interested in hospitality. Okay. And then we had to train in different departments uh, when you start learning about it. And then the kitchens where I felt I fit in most. As a small mm. person, everyone thought that was really weird. Yeah. But I, I just found a passion to it. I didn't give up and I continued to push on. And it's, alhamdulillah, it was great. <laughs> wow, wow. So even like before going to school, like did you see yourself like cooking stuff? Like, you know, a certain cookie everybody loved, the cake, you know? Serum Bahraini dish, like the, everybody loved your balalit, for example. <laughs> well, <laughs> so I'm, how did that happen? I was inspired by my mother because she was always cooking something. So I was very curious about what she was cooking, what she would add to it, and where she would buy the ingredients and so mm. on. So there was a little bit of passion that sparked from there. Okay. But I think it grew more more when I got hands on in the kitchen and wow. in the professional aspect. Wow, wow, wow! I'm sure it, like there were a lot of things you wanted to be as well besides just being a chef. Like, <laughs> you know, maybe you wanted to be a Wonder Woman. You know, <laughs> one of the video games you've been playing. It's like you know, I want to be a game developer or you wanted to be a fashion designer. But what really hit home with you, with you in the culinary world? How did it spark? Like you know. I want to continue doing that as a chef. Well, when I first, uh, when I was training and uh, in my first job, I started to cook for guests. And usually when guests go out to a restaurant, especially when it's a hotel and so, mm. it's usually to celebrate something. Right. Uh, and that smile that they have at the end of the meal, it felt, it felt really good. And wow. you wanted to continue to make people's day at the end of, the end of whatever they're celebrating. Wow. Wow, wow, and I, I can only imagine the reactions you get right now, right? Like, <laughs> with like this dish, you do it and they eat it and then you see the smiles on their faces. It must be really like addictive, it's, I would it's say. It's very rewarding. Mm. It's very rewarding at the end of the day. Mm. And uh, it just, and the adrenaline rush of it as well, it just keeps you going. So once you have a passion for it, I think it's very hard to just leave it. Wow, wow. So now, let's say with the journey, you finished with school here in Bahrain and now you're heading to the international world. Like reading your CV and reading your journey, I'm like, well, she's been everywhere, <laughs> mashallah. So like, what was the first time, oh, when was the first time you left Bahrain, you know, to, to pursue your culinary career? Well, I studied hospitality in Bahrain. Yes. But when I wanted to specialize in culinary, I went to the culinary arts of, uh, the, Col the Royal Academy of Culinary Arts okay. in Jordan. And that was my first aspect of uh, what's, uh, uh, the natural ingredients, the mm. um, what's around me, uh, mm. different ingredients, uh, culture, food, and so on. And from there, I went to Spain, wow. which is also a different as well of ingredients um, and imagine. different cooking techniques and so on. And then from Hong Kong, it's a whole different. What? So, so <laughs> Jordan, Spain, Hong Kong. How did that happen? So, okay, I can imagine going to Jordan, being an Arabic country and all that, and they do have amazing culinary schools mm. over there. How did you jump from Jordan to Spain? Uh, it was an internship. Okay. We had a four months internship, and I wanted to go somewhere like that's very different from what I'm used to. Okay. So I was working in Marbella, uh, Kempinski. And oh, wow. it was it was very interesting because the internship was during summer and that restaurant only opens during summer. Mm. So it was very interesting. It was my first experience to open kitchens itself. Okay. And uh, I had to, I, I was uh, exposed to, to uh, ingredients that was homegrown. 
Oh, so wow. that was very interesting for me. And uh, the internship with uh, Hong Kong, it was also part of a school internship uh, okay. when you graduate. Okay. Uh, they gave you another period of four months to go train. <laughs> wow. And uh, that one was actually, it came from the school itself. There was an open position at the Hong Kong Jockey Club. Okay. And uh, I, got, I got a placement over there. Mm. And it was a very good experience because a lot of Michelin star chefs would come and they would be guest chefs themselves. Okay. And they would cook for the VIPs in the Hong Kong Jockey Club. No so way. I was I was part of that training, which was very interesting, and it was like the first push to Michelin star uh, cuisines. Wow! Wow! So it's like you've been exposed to international cuisines all around, right? From Bahrain to Jordan, heading to Spain, all the way to Hong Kong, and then. We still remember seeing your pictures around in Bahrain, right? <laughs> it's like it's like in different restaurants, different places. Like, I don't know if it was the first of its kind kind of exposure when we saw a girl pretty much going out there and you know becoming a star from becoming a chef. So I think it pretty much changed the narrative over here in Bahrain. You weren't the first to do that. Although we have amazing names as chefs in Bahrain, but it seems like in your approach, it went more like from a media perspective. It's like how you change the narrative of how amazing it is to be a chef. Like, you know, you can be a doctor, you can be an engineer, and you can be a chef yeah. as well. It can be as good, even, you know, as big as all of these careers. So what can you say about that? You came to Bahrain and all of a sudden you see pictures all over <laughs> the place. <laughs> well, it's, it really depends on what, whatever you do in life, whatever job you pick up, you can only succeed if you really push into it. You know, no one will guide, take your hand and like take you through the steps. You have to push and climb wow. those steps on your own. And uh, to get there, to succeed, you have to travel. You have to expose yourself and be, put yourself in situations that you might not even be comfortable with mm. just to get the experience of it. So you have to get experience. Wow. You have to challenge yourself. Wow. And like, especially with the Michelin star, right? It's yeah. like the Oscars in the culinary world. That's yes. amazing. As it's glamorous as it sounds, like it's, it is very stressful. So mm. you need to have an endurance. And okay. that, I believe, is shared among all, all kind of uh, careers that you take. So any job you wow. take, you have to have endurance. Wow, wow, wow. So there's <laughs> a lot going on. Wow. So. With all that going on and taking place and learning different kind of cuisines and I still remember like even telling me like there's certain dishes that it will take a lifetime to learn <laughs> and to do like and especially like I think I don't know if it was something to do with Japanese cuisine or Asian cuisine but I still remember he told me about a certain dish like you know but it will take a lifetime because it's an art how it's cooked and all of that. Now hearing you, I'm like, definitely. Because <laughs> we're like used to like the fast kind of stuff, right? Yeah. But now what's happening seems like a lot of people are getting into the culinary world and they're telling us how things can take time. Mm, it does. You know, it does take it's time. like how you cook the meat, the chicken, the bread, and the portion of the bread and all of that. Mm -hmm. So things are changing. Speaking of that, what are you doing now? What's happening in Lulu's world? Well, I just finished a collaboration with Rada Art Gallery. Okay. Uh, I wanted to reach out to something that I don't know how to do, which is like pottery, plates and so okay. on. So I had a collaboration with her. She made amazing plates and so on. And those dishes I'll be using, I'll be taking those dishes with me to Ireland. I'm leaving in a few days oh, and wow. I got an opportunity to continue my professional career there. No way. So, I'll be making Bahraini cuisine over there. <laughs> You're gonna make Bahraini cuisine and dishes in Ireland. In Ireland. <laughs> Very interesting. Well, so can you tell us a little bit what gonna do? Are you gonna do a fusion? Are we gonna see a, a typical machbus, haris? What's gonna happen over there? <laughs> typical machbus, haris. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Huh, what kind of reception is going to happen over there? It's going to be very interesting. Uh, there's a pop-up uh, dinner that's happening in okay. uh, end of summer. Okay. And uh, we'll be cooking for a few guests. And as well as I got an opportunity in a Michelin star restaurant. Nice. So we will see how it goes from there. Wow. You know, it will be so... <laughs> um, it's it's going to be a story. Like, it's worth the trip to mm. go to Ireland to have much booze. <laughs> it is going to be interesting. Like it, their ingredients are very different huh. from ba from home. You know, of course, okay. uh, what grows here is going to be very different over there. The spices might be harder to obtain over there. Right. Uh, luckily, um, nowadays it's very easy just to buy the spi spices and put it in your bag and just take it over. 
um, but it's gonna be it's gonna be a good experience. Um, I think what's the most interesting thing is how they will react to our cuisine. Mm. So we will see how it goes from there. Wow, wow, wow! It's amazing to hear your story and all the things that are like pretty much. I think there will be like a sci-fi kind of thing. A long time ago, mm -hmm. it's like someday. A Bahraini girl will go to Ireland <laughs> and we're going to export our cuisine to other places. Now hearing it right now here on TV, I think this is just mind blowing. It's just amazing for what you're doing right now. I think it's just phenomenal. But even the Michelin star, it's just something else. It's like, you know, having that kind of stuff. Like if somebody wants to take the same steps you've taken, well, what kind of advice you can give them? Don't give up. Don't give up. Yeah. You will work long hours, you'll be underpaid, but don't give up. Uh, it's that's how it is when you start off and then you grow up in steps and in the end it's it is rewarding mm. um, I'll say travel as much as you can because what I used to do is uh, I used to save up all my money uh, from work and then during that 30 days period of vacation I'll use those 30 days to travel outside and to stage in different restaurants, uh, try my best to try to get the visa for that country and work in that country, even mm. if it's not paid. It's, it's very hard. It's challenging like mentally and physically, yeah. but it is rewarding. You get skills and that's the best investment you can do, so. Wow, you took the leap of faith on this one, <laughs> didn't you? Not expecting what to have or what's gonna happen and all yeah. of this. But now, like if you would actually right now have a talk right here, with Lulu 10 years ago, the younger self, what are you going to tell her? I'll tell her not to take things too to heart. Like uh, 10 years ago, every time I failed, I would take it personally. I would say, maybe I am not good enough. Maybe this is not uh, the kind of career for me. But uh, like, luckily, I had my mother tell me that, but it wasn't like too, you know, it's not, it's not the same. It's right. not too in your head. So it's, I think I would, I would tell her that <laughs> again and again and again. Wow, wow. So what is the future like for, you know, for Lulu Suela? I don't know. Happen? We don't know. The future is very unpredictable. Okay. It's really unpredictable. But um, I continue to train, okay. at least for a while. I have no, uh, um, I have no interest to open a restaurant yet. Um, mm, everybody asked you that question. Everyone right? asked me this question. When will you open your own restaurant? I have no interest to open because I'm still young. I still want to train and the food industry is moving very fast. Hmm. Uh, so I would prefer to like get as much knowledge as I can. And then when I see, when I know it's the right time to open a restaurant, I'll open it. Wow. Wow. You are absolutely right. I mean, some other friends as well, they've been saying the same thing in the FMB world. They say it's just a moving a bit too fast. Like, mm. you know, if you remember all the sandwich places, the cafeterias, the ticket places, <laughs> jam burger, and, and all the things that we live with and we grew up with, they're saying that it's moving a bit too fast, that, you know, the new generation, all that, the new cuisines coming in, where are they with, with all of that? So you're absolutely right with what's going on. It's just moving a bit too fast. but. With all of that is that it seems that you have a good grip on things, right? You have an understanding. So what, what more do you want to learn when it comes to culinary? Um, I have learned a lot about cuisines that's not Bahraini. Like the only time I had to actually learn Bahraini food cuisine was like when I came back from my travels. Yeah. And I had to like, as an adult, like see, see my mom cook, like understand the spices that I actually put wow. in. So this is something that I have to be taught. Because huh. even if, it, whenever uh, culinary school you apply to, they always like French cuisine, Swiss cuisine, uh, American cuisine. You don't learn your own cuisine, uh, not Bahraini cuisine. So this is what I want to dive in more. But why is it so? Like, why is it not, I would say, I would say like, why is it kind of like not attainable to learn the Bahraini cuisine? Is it because they think everybody knows how to do haris or madruba or the Bahraini stuff? Or is it nobody took the step to actually put it all in a book? and teach it as a course. I think that's the case. No one actually put it in a step and uh, teach it as a course. You know, um, we're, we're very unique. You know, we're, we, in, in our cuisine, we're influenced by the Indian trade, right. the Silk Road. And it's, 
it's very flavorful. Like even if you go to UAE, it's different. Our food, even if you have the same caps and machbus and so on, the flavors are very different. Even though the style of cooking is sort of similar. So I think we need to like focus on our food and our ingredients and elevate mm. it from there. That's how, that's how it will hit the international market. Yeah. <laughs> Machboos 2.0. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Here's the new Machboos. <laughs> Upgraded Machboos. Upgraded Machboos. <laughs> that will be very interesting to see. <laughs> you know, and your future restaurant, you never know. <laughs> that, you know? Try the all new, upgraded, elevated, funky Machboos. <laughs> <laughs> that's be very interesting. Well, you know, this has been a very interesting talk, to be honest with you. Any last words to the viewers, to me, to people watching Bahrain TV right now? Thank you so much uh, for having me. I think as well, um, uh, I think the youth here are very um, interested in the hospitality field comparing to how it was 10 years ago. Okay. So I think it's, 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 a it's gonna be a good future uh, mm. for Bahraini food itself. And uh, I'm excited to see what's gonna happen. I'm excited to see where I'm gonna be, uh, mm. how different, what kind of new restaurants are gonna open mm. and so on, so. Wow. <laughs> really exciting stuff ahead, right? But again, I mean, hopefully I'll make the trip to Ireland just to have Madruba. I'll invite you. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as I open, you'll be like the first guest. I was like, oh, yes, yes, and take a selfie. It's like, well, I'm having Madruba here in Belfast. <laughs> You're having it in Galali. It's a different experience, different spices. <laughs> Well, thank you so much, Lulu, for thank being you. with us right here on Bahrain now. And we cannot wait to see how the future is like for you. Thank you so much for thank joining you. us. Most definitely. Well, ladies and gentlemen, as Lulu said, don't give up. Keep going. All that were the words of Lulu right here on Bahrain now in an interview. So the event today is about introducing the Indonesian coffee to the Bahrainese coffee lovers, especially the Indonesian Arabica coffee. That was the thing then, the tonight's event, uh, we are not only introducing, but we bring from Indonesia the owners of the plantation itself, the, what we call it the Rangyang coffee uh, plantations. It was from West Java. And also, I'm introduced to you the Baranese. Uh, the uh, he is actually the coffee lovers, Barani coffee lover also. But he was the importers from Bahrain who import their Arabica coffee from Indonesia. His name is Mr. Yok, my brother Yok. He's been. Uh, no, I may sound controversial, but coffee is not a drink; it's an experience, right? So, yeah, it's a culture. So when I visited uh, Rayang's, uh, uh, you know, coffee plantation, I saw like. Um, the way they look after the plantation and the people, the community, and so it impressed me a lot. So I thought like these, these uh, not only the focus should be on coffee, but the whole ecosystem, right? So we started uh, importing and now we are uh, taking that to blockchain and we'll take to Intermina region. So yeah, looking forward to it. So underline the importance of uh, the kind of the ecosystems of the plantations coffee in Indonesia is not talking about the life for the producers, but the life also for the farmers. Like the plantation they have in, in, in Bandung, in the what we call it the Halu Mountains, it was 45 hectares, it's about 45,000 square meters. That was only uh, not for their own plantations, but others uh, cooperatives of the farmers that belong to the, the 25 and the 30 farmers. So the, 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 the vast area, the 45, then managed by the, the, the Rahayang coffee. So it will support the life of the community itself. So that's why Jock mentions it's about the experience, it's about the cultures, it's about how we are sustained the living, all, all of us, the family, the big ecosystem, and then to introduce the world, especially to Bahrain, that 
this is the coffees of the cultures. This is the coffee of the environment. The secrets behind of Indonesian coffee, um, coffee is a, for Indonesian is about culture. It starts from a long time when when colonized come to Indonesia and and they start to do the like um, we they they call it stelso culture stelso. So what we are what we want to do here is to bring and level up all the farmers. So it's not ab only about Rahyang, but it's only uh, also about the villagers in the, in the area. area. Yeah, so at, at the Halo Mountain. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we've made it to the finish line. A huge thank you to all of our guests for joining us tonight. Another huge thank you to all of you watching us at home. As always, be sure to reach out to us on our social media accounts shown below. We love hearing from you. I'm Barah Abdullah. Till next time, Bahrain, goodbye, good night, and God bless.